Hi everyone, it's Shannon here. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, we are going to create a really fun easel card using Honeybee Stamps' new House Builder die set. So here's the card we're going to be creating today. As you can see, that House Builder die creates just the cutest little house with tons of details. I just love this die set. So much fun. I combined this die with an easel card design and I want to show you guys it in action because I think it's really cool and works really well with this house because when it's all finished you can pop up that house and it can sit on the shelf with this little front yard. I just think it's so cute and it works really well together. So here is the house builder die set. So there are lots of dies in this set and I just want to go over them with you. The largest die here cuts out the actual house. And then the next largest die will cut out a roof and that's designed so you can kind of do two different colors. And then you have a hinge piece right here and that helps you create a shaped card with this house die. And then we're going to move on to the eaves. There's two dies for the eaves. The smaller one here actually fits over the larger one and that's what actually creates that little rooftop or little eave there. And then we're going to move on to the windows. There's two parts for each windows. There's two windows and there's two parts. So you have the pane part and then you have the backing part. So here's a smaller window with the backing part right there. We have a door and we have some steps as well. And then a, a little die to cut out a window in the door and then a door knob and handle. Then we have the chimney and we also have some curtains. I like to use the bumpy one for the small little window right there and the more draped one for the larger window. Also some planter boxes, or at least I use these mostly, for, I think they're for planter boxes. I'll use them for actually a lots of different purposes, but that little one can even be put above the door to kind of frame the door as well. Now we're going to move on to some of the greenery. We got a fence, of course, that's really cute, and then some shrubs and some um, plants to go in the flower boxes. And then we have a pot and a little topiary, topiary with little stick you can add. And then some more like little greenery pieces and flowers and a reef. So those are all the pieces to the die. So lots of fun things you can create with this die set. So I've actually gone ahead and cut out pretty much all of my elements to create this house. And now I'm going to kind of start coloring them and um, scoring them. I'm actually going to score it first. So I'm going to take the house here and just score with my scoreboard at every quarter of an inch. And this is just going to make it look, kind of look like siding. It's just a nice little detail, adds a little texture, and I really, really like the look of it. So I'm just scoring up about halfway, kind of up to the roof line, and then I'll stop. And then I will grab the two smaller eaves parts and again score at a quarter of an inch all the way up to the very tip top point of the each of the eaves and again that just it just adds some nice texture really does look like siding and such a simple little uh, effect and you can do it with any colored cardstock which I think is kind of cool too so now I'm going to move on to adding color to my die cuts so I die cut all of my shapes pretty much except for a few out of white cardstock and I decided to color them with by ink blending you of course if you'd rather you could color just use colored cardstock instead I'm starting here with the roof and I'm blending faded jeans distress oxide and I'm going to ink blend as well the eaves and these four um, planter boxes which I'm actually going to turn into shutters. After I finished with the faded jeans I'm moving on to a distressed ink. This is chip sapphire and I'm going to add a shadow just kind of like a darker ink blending at the top and bottom of the roof as and as well as a little bit on the uh, shutters and the roofs for the eaves as well. This is just adds a little bit of depth and I really like that little touch. So I'm going to put those aside now. I'm done with that. Now moving on to the door. I have barn door distressed oxide and I'm going to ink blend that whole door and then once I get that done I'll move on to my darker shade which is going to be fired brick distress ink and just ink blend a little bit on the bottom there. And I forgot to die cut the window out before I ink blended, which is what you probably really should do. But I just die cut it afterwards and then die cut another window out of white cardstock. And now I'm blending on all my window backs as well as that little window that goes inside the door with a distress oxide. This is tumbled glass. I'm just blending along the tops about, about a little bit past halfway with that. It's just going to add a nice glare, almost look like glass. Now I'm going to blend the chimney and this is fired brick distress oxide. I'm going to bring the chimney and the chimney has a little like tiny little rectangle that goes at the top like a detail that adds the lip to the chimney as well as the little pots. I'm going to ink blend those as well. And then for my shadow I'm adding fired brick distressed ink. So same color but 
the ink version and I'm just going to ink blend the bottom of the chimney, the lip, and the pots. Now I'm moving on to my reefs. They're really teeny tiny and I'm sorry you can't really see them. I'm using walnut stain distress oxide and ground espresso distress oxide. And I'll actually stack those two reefs on top of each other. Kind of my trying to mimic like a, a twig reef. Now I'm moving on to shrubs and um, plants for the um, planter boxes. I'm using peeled uh, paint distress oxide here and ink blending all of my greenery. The two little round circle pieces are actually the insides of the reefs. So I just saved the in negative piece and I'm using that for my pot. I could also have used the, the topiary kind of circle as well, but I had already die cut these, so saved a little time. I'm now adding my shadow here with peeled paint distress ink. So again, same uh, ink color, but this time it's the ink version instead of the oxide version for my darker shade. Now I'm going to ink blend this scrap of white cardstock with these three colors. This is for my little teeny flowers that I'm going to add to kind of add some color and just some nice really cute details. I've ink blended a red, an orange, and a yellow and now I'm going to take the little flower dies and just die cut them each section of color with these little dies and I'm going to die cut multiple of each color. So I'm only die cutting four right here on camera, but I die cut a whole bunch more off camera. So I have lots of little colors, lots of little flowers to play with and, and add all over to all over my house. So I actually have everything ready to start assembling this card. So I'm going to start by gluing the roof down onto the house. Now I'm going to take the white part of the eaves and glue them on to the larger piece, or I should say the smaller part of the eaves onto the larger piece. And then I'm going to kind of set these aside and start kind of grabbing that chimney there because that's the next piece that needs to go. Put that little ch lip on the chimney and I'm actually going to glue this chimney behind one of the eaves. Um, the first mistake I made when I made this this card first is I actually glued the chimney kind of beyond the roof line, kind of sticking out the top of the roof. And you can't do that because then all of a sudden this card wouldn't be A2 anymore. So that's just something to keep in mind. You want to kind of keep that chimney right on the roof. Don't go past the roof with your chimney. So once I had that chimney glued to the eaves, I can glue both my eaves down. Now I'm going to move on to the door. I'm going to glue the steps onto the door first, and then I'm just going to go ahead and glue the door right in the center of the card. What I love about these elements is you could put them in different spots. I have a second card that I'll share with you at the end where I kind of put the door more on the right of the card. So there's a lot of fun. You can kind of play with the design of the house a little bit too. I just quickly glued the window inside the door, and now I'm starting to glue the panes on to the window back. So I'm I'm going to start with my four paned windows, my larger windows. These actually are going to go on the first floor of my house. These smaller windows are going to go on the upper floor. Before I glue the panes on these though, I'm going to glue my little curtains. I cut these little curtains out of some pattern paper and I'm just going to glue those on. They're a little bit bigger than the window so I'm just trimming off the overhang on both of those um, curtains and then I'm going to now finally glue the panes onto these little windows and those will just kind of frame them out make them look really pretty and I did glue the curtains a good thing you note know, a little bit lower than the actual edge of the window so they were a little bit more visible so they weren't so so hidden behind the panes now I'm going to start constructing the planter boxes. So I cut the actually the planter boxes out of some gray cardstock. That's the besides the pattern um, paper, the gray cardstock is the only other that's the only other than white cardstock that I used. So I just glued the greenery on the planter boxes and then glued the planter boxes on to the little windows. And now I'm ready to glue these windows in the upper part of the house. Now I'm going to move on to my bigger windows that go on my first floor. Just glue those down. And once I get those in place, I'm ready for my shutters. And again, my shutters are actually um, planter boxes. And I thought that they would look um, pretty convincing as shutters and I think they work. I think it's okay. And that's what I love about these kind of die sets is you can get kind of creative and kind of use the negative pieces for different things or use the actual die cuts for different things. So you can, you know, be, be imaginative. <laughs> come up with some other uses for the things. It's a lot of fun. So now I've just went ahead and glued the shrubs down and now I'm gluing the reefs together and I have two reefs here. I'm gluing my darker one down onto the um, door first and then I'm going to take my lighter one and glue that right on top. I'm kind of trying to um, not match them up perfectly a little bit off so you can see the darker one underneath a little bit 
and now I'm going to glue that top. This is the tiny um, planner box that I'm going to glue it right on top of the door. It just really nicely frames the door. And then those two little green shrubs, they're going to go inside the pots here. And then I'm going to add some glue to start gluing down some flowers. I was kind of thinking of making mums here. I'm kind of doing like a um, autumn kind of card a little bit. Not, not super, but just kind of the the flowers are all kind of like autumn color. That's why I chose yellow, orange, and green. After I have my mums all done, I'll glue those down right next to the door. And then I'll move on to the flowers for the planter boxes at the top of the house. And again, just grabbing my flowers, my little reservoir of yellow, orange, red flowers and start popping them on. And now I'm moving on to just a few little flowers, a yellow, orange, and red on my little reef. Just a nice little detail, I think, on the little reef here. Once I get those down, I'm actually done with my house. So I'll hold up to the camera here so you can get a look at all the little details. I just love putting it together. I honestly feel like I'm playing with a dollhouse almost when I start um, constructing this house and putting all the little details together. So here I have an A2 card. And I've ink blended at the top and bottom just a little bit with a uh, distress oxide. I used tumble glass at the top and peeled uh, paint at the bottom. And now I'm going to score at two and an eighth, but I'm going to flip it over and score in the back side. I just like to have the kind of raised edge at the front, but it doesn't really matter. And then fold it. So this is actually the center point, the vertical center point of the card front. So really easy to do. And now I have a panel that's three and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to, I've already ink blend with peeled paint and peeled paint or peeled paint, um, oxide and peeled paint distressing, just like I did with the shrubs. And I'm going to stamp on it my sentiment. The sentiment comes from two stamp sets. The congrats on your new is from the journey stamp set. And then I cut this home from the wild and free stamp set. I just cut it out of the stamp and I'm going to kind of Frankenstein this sentiment together here. So I got the two there or three, I guess, stamps arranged and I'm going to pick them up by Misty and then I'm going to ink them up with this distress oxide. This is barn door and just stamp it right here on my front lawn. <laughs> So after I've stamped that sentiment, I actually have all my pieces ready to kind of put this card together and really finish it up. I've added some glue to the back side of my panel and I'm going to glue it down onto the inside of my card at the very edge of the that inside uh, panel, I guess, of the card. And now I'm going to take my um, house and I'm going to only add glue to the lower half, not any on the roof basically, and I'm going to glue it on to the front of my card, but only on the lower half of the front of the card, and just center it here and stick it down. I did grab a little piece of white cardstock and just popped it in there while I was gluing that, just in case that sentiment that I just stamped happened to still be wet, because it was um, that kind of hybrid ink, which stays wet a little bit longer. Now that I've got that glued, I'm going to finish this up by adding some pavers here, or some like stepping stones, I guess, and I just used the smallest window die or window pane die to and die cut it out of some gray cardstock and use the negative so I use that inside of the window pane here to create these um, stepping stones and I've just arranged them and now I'm just gluing them onto basically my front lawn and now I'll finish up the card by adding a few flowers in the grass here and this will just um, I think add a nice little detail and just kind of carry out the whole look, kind of finish the whole look of the card. So after I glue those flowers down, my card is all done. And I'll hold the card up to the camera so hopefully you can get a better look at all the little details, and there are many of them in this card. I love this die set, I think it's so fun. You can definitely play around with the elements, the windows, the eaves, kind of um, change the order or take away some, to rotate the windows. There's lots of fun things you can do. You can also, of course, use pattern paper. Maybe try like a brick pattern paper or a brick stencil to kind of create a brick house. And I think it works really well with this e easel um, card design. I think it just by popping it up and resting it on that lip from the front lawn, you just have this really cool look and it's just quite a surprise, I think, for the recipient. Here's a second card that I created where here I used uh, the negative from the four pane window to create the little stepping stones. And I also cut out the pane went part for my large window and created shutters from the same negative that I used to create the stepping stones on the first cards. 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If you want any more information on the products I use, they are linked down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.